name is Stephen Bartlett. I uh, have come uh, to Venezuela representing the U.S. Food Sovereignty Alliance and uh, we are very uh, pleased with the visits we have made to campesinos here in Venezuela as well as urban organizers and cooperativists who, um, who are bringing food into their, their cooperatives in the popular neighborhoods in places like Caracas and other cities in Venezuela. We were very thrilled. We are farmers, some of us, and we are thrilled that uh, we got to meet farmers and we could understand each other very well and what the challenges are for them to produce uh, food given all the problems that farmers always face, such as weeds, such as pests. Uh, but we were very impressed by the organized farmers up in Trujillo State that we visited and also in the area of San Felipe that they have a great knowledge and great skills and ability. They work did, you, did you visit those places already? We visited them. That's cool. We uh, were up in the mountains above Karachi uh, in the uh, vegetable production areas and witnessed small scale intensive vegetable production that was, all of it was dedicated to feeding people in low income neighborhoods here in Caracas and other places of Venezuela. Uh, the system they put in place where they plan the, the production according to the needs of the city and everything is planned so the farmer knows exactly what price they will get, he or she will get for their produce and they don't have to worry about being uh, exploited by middlemen. This system is very, um, very uh, strategic and especially strategic now given the blockade. Our delegation was very happy that we got through immigration in some of us two or three countries to get here with a considerable amount of seeds. We, we were given a list of seeds, we collected seeds, we bought seeds, we brought seeds and delivered them to the farmers here as a, as a sign of our solidarity to break the blockade because it's just not correct. It's not, uh, it's a crime against humanity to prevent people from having access to the very things that they need to survive. So we, we are very, very determined to go back to our countries and to dispel as much as we can the lies that are being told in the mass media, uh, the propaganda that the corporate media has been telling about Venezuela, just repeating the, the talking points of President Trump and his advisors and his cabinet members. Uh, we are sick at heart to see the suffering of people due to those sanctions. At the same time, we, we just were visiting a Mission de Paz uh, here in Caracas and see the fantastic projects that people are undertaking to make life better, to make the quality of life good for children and teenagers and adults in these, uh, lo in these locations. Did you visit Venezuela before? This is my third visit to Venezuela. I came bringing a delegation in 2008, I think it was, to the uh, Social Forum of the Americas. And uh, I've been here on a previous trip as well. This is the first time I got to spend more time in the countryside. That's nice. And how do you learn about this delegation? Can you talk about the delegation itself? Sure, the delegation, William, William Camacaro and the, the Bolivarian Circle of Alberto Lovera, in New York City has been leading these delegations for many years. Uh, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to be a co-leader with William of this delegation. Uh, it's also my privilege to be that my alliance, the alliance that my organization belongs to, uh, which is an, an alliance of about 40 peasant and uh, urban agriculture organizations around the United States, we, we are providing the Food Sovereignty Prize. We are honoring Pueblo Plan Pueblo a Pueblo with this year's 2019 Food Sovereignty Prize. We've been giving that prize since 2009 and this honors organizations that are making great progress and doing great uh, work in terms of bringing true food sovereignty. And in this case, the work of food sovereignty is directly related to the effort to maintain the national sovereignty of the Venezuelan. I read that the event for that prize is going to happen in September. Is that correct? O October 10th October. in Ferguson, so, Missouri. We will be in Ferguson, Missouri for the ceremony. To, uh, to so do you think that there are going to be members of the Plan Pueblo a Pueblo there? No, right? It's uh, going to be hard. We're, we're going to try. The, the, there's a problem with visas. Yes. 
uh, and the lack of diplomatic relations with the United States. Uh, but if that doesn't work, we will use a, a Skype. Uh, and I've also done several yeah. interviews. I've interviewed several of the leaders. Uh, we, we are very unhappy that, that the blockade is really, uh, it's not fair, it's affecting people. Uh, that we need to have more contact and more inter, inter exchanges between the, the people of the United States and the people of Venezuela. And, and just to end, can you tell me just one or two negative scenes that impress you in a negative scene about your, the, this visit? Um, well, you don't have to, but but if you found something that impressed you in a negative way, it's gonna be like we don't really want to emphasize the negative, but um, there are, you know, there are, there are some things. When Cuba went through the special period in the 1990s, they couldn't get any chemical fertilizer, they couldn't get pesticides, and as a result, they were able to transform their agriculture toward a more organic form of agriculture. Um, so do you think that do we you need know, it's, to? Uh, it's a silver lining. It's one positive thing that could come from the sanctions that we are completely opposed to and must be must be abolished. So you didn't see too much of that in the countryside? So what we saw was people really learning to use organic uh, methods okay. by necessity. But that's a good thing because that will, that's that's the kind of agriculture that has kept us alive yeah. for tens of thousands of years as a human race. Thank you. Thank